Hello, fictional. Welcome to the What If Issei. Today we are gonna see, What If Issei Got Harem With Seraphil And Sona. Part 1. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Ice-kun, ice -kun, a soft voice was heard from a close distance, causing Issei to open his eyes. As he struggles to open his heavy eyelids, the first thing he sees was a naked Seraphil on top of him under his blanket. Eh Serah? When did you get on my bed? Issei panics. I told you I would do this and that with you every morning, didn't I? Oh yeah, I almost forgot about my promise. Seraphil grabs Issei's head and kisses him. Do you like it, ice Coon? Yes Sarah. You are really acting different ever since we became lovers. Are you okay? For some reason, Seraphil drops her head as if she was disappointment. For me to be caught this early, this book on lovers is a lie. Seraphil took out a lover's manual from under the blanket and threw it to the ground. You had that all along? This is what you were following. Issei yelled out of shock. Seraphil covered Issei's mouth. S-H-H-H-H-H, quiet, they will hear you. Issei turns his head to both sides of the bed and becomes surprised that Ria's and Asia aren't there. Huh? Where is Butchu and Asia? They are down there making your lunch. Both of them are competing with Akeno-chan to see who gets to make lunch for you for the day. I plan to do the same tomorrow since I have shooting today. Is it because the two are gone that you decided to sneak into my bed? Yes, so I can spend a little time with my ice coon before we go to school. Sona-chan is strict as always so I cannot sleep with you. It will be evening before we can spend time like this again, so I want to enjoy it till the last minute. Serafo lets go of Issei's head momentarily and lifts herself up a little, allowing Issei to view her large breasts. Would you like that, ice coon? Unable to take his eyes off off Serafo's breasts, Issei gets fired up. Yes. Yes. Please do. Serafo gets excited hearing Issei's answer. Yay. Then I will do two days worth of service before my alarm rings. Service? Issei yelled. That's right, ice coon. Seraphil said in a childish tone. Before Issei can respond, Seraphil grabs Issei and pushes him onto her breasts, which Issei immediately gives into. Nothing like the feeling of soft op eye in the morning, and it is the Mayu's op eye I am feeling. I am so lucky to be alive right now. Wait a minute, the problem is I can't breathe. Unable to talk, begins struggling for breath. His arms started flailing as he attempts to get Seraphil to release him. Come on ice coon, we just started. That is not the problem here. I want this to continue, but I can't breathe. Issei yelled in his thoughts. Feeling his consciousness fading away, Issei begins to move his body instinctively. Aha. Hey, cut it out ice coon. I am ticklish there. Issei's fingers move across Seraphil's sides, but Issei cannot stop his hands as his body randomly struggles. Stop. Stop. Ahahaha. Seraphil begins squirming and starts to move her body across the bed while clinging on to Issei. Wah. Both of them fell off the bed, but luckily the blankets that were accidentally thrown during Issei's struggle soften their fall. I heard a thud, are you alright, ice coon? Sona entered the room in her blue-colored pajamas after hearing the thud, but goes into a state of shock to seeing Seraphil naked and slightly out of breath on top of Issei, who awakens and immediately recognizes the situation. Wait Sona. This is a misunderstanding. What are you doing to one Isama? Sona yelled to the point where everyone walking past Issei's large house could hear her scream. At the kitchen table. So Seraphil Sama did something like that. I thought that you are going to watch over her Sona. Wasn't that our deal when we let you stay here? Rhea said in an angry tone. Sorry, one Sama is much more perceptive of me than I thought. Sona said as she lies her head down. Next time, please don't attack me until you hear the story, okay? Issei's face is shown to be bruised up as Asia heals him. Sorry, Ice Coon. I am still not used to the fact that the two of you are lovers, so please take it slow. Anyway, I have to leave early since I am the student council president, so I am going to change now. Sona leaves the table and heads upstairs. I better go too since I am the teacher's assistant. Seraphil gets up from the table and heads the same way. Just because you and Seraphil Sama became lovers, don't forget you still have me eyes. Rias warns Issei. Don't leave me out as well I san Asia also warns him and the rest of the girls follow. Yes Issei said out of fear. In school. Hey there eyes. How is life treating you? Mitsuda asked as he pats Issei on the back. Remembering Seraphil's breasts, Issei shows a lecherous face in response. It was a very good morning. What? Care to explain? Motohama shows up and intensely stare at Issei's face. All I can tell you is that it is another op eye related moment. Quit hogging everything to yourself. Just tell us already. Both Mitsuda and Motohama yelled. 
Addis and Murayama continue to look at the perverted trio in dismay as their rambling is loud enough for the whole class to hear, although most ignore them. Aisan. Asia approaches Ice as Motohama and Mitsuda continue to argue. Asia, do you need something from me? No, I was just wondering if you want to eat with me, along with Zenobia-san and Arena-san. Of course. Lunch is better when you are eating with your friends. Issei responded immediately. Then would Motohama-san and Mitsuda-san like to join as well? It's like I san said, the more people the better. We would love to have lunch with you Asia-chan. Both Mitsuda and Motohama vainly tried to act like gentlemen in front of Asia. Hey Caddis, I kind of noticed something about Haidu-kun. Murayama said. What is it? Haidu is a pervert who a lot of girl in this school hate, right? What made him popular all of a sudden that he is hanging out with Asia-chan and more importantly, but you. I don't even want to think about that pervert being friends with beautiful girls, especially Ria's one Isama. How he became friends with so many girls remain a mystery to this day. I see. Why do you ask? Even I am dismayed over the fact that Haidu Kun became so popular even though he is a pervert. I just don't get it. Let's just leave them alone. Any more and we might catch their idiocy. Agreed. Both Caddis and Murayama left in disgust. Here you go Isan. Say ah. Asia sticks her fork into a chicken carriage and moves it towards Issei's mouth. Ah Issei obeys as the food enters his mouth. Delicious. Did you learn how to make this by yourself? Well, I had a little help from Butchu when I was making my lunch, but yeah. Yeah, Asia will make a great wife someday. Zenovia comments as she takes another bite of her sandwich. Hearing this, Asia's face turns fully red and begins to stutter. W wife. Please stop teasing me Zenovia-san. It's frustrating, but from this perspective, Ice Kun and Asia San do look like a couple. Irina also commented. Will you two stop showing off? It is very frustrating as both me and Motohama are still single. Mitsuda yells out of jealousy and frustration. Ah sorry. Speaking of couples, do you know where Serafalsama is? She usually hangs out with us every day. Asia asked Issei. Sera will eat lunch at a different time due to a scheduling conflict involving some of the staff meetings. I understand. It is never easy being a teacher, even if you are just an assistant. After school is done, all members of the occult research club and the student council meet in the old school building, where Azazel is present. I am pretty sure you all know why we are here, right? Azazel asked. It is related to the cow's brigade, isn't it? Sona asked. Yes. Well there doesn't seem to be any active planning coming from them, there was a mention of evil dragons heard by one of our spy teams from the Grigori. It appears that they are only talking about how they wish to revive one, but the dragons themselves are a major issue, since reviving them is actually possible. What are the evil dragons, Sensei? Issei asked. The class of dragons thought to be extinct. They are well known for their brutality and power, and as a result, they were either sealed or killed off. Many often tried to avoid fighting them as they lived to fight. I am pretty sure everyone knows the name of the dragons, even though Ice did not until now. Hey. I am still studying the history of the underworld. There is no way I could have learned about them at where I am currently. Issei protested. Calm down. Anyway, I am pretty sure that after hearing about them, you would know that Vritra is also an evil dragon, but he is cute compared to the three most powerful among them. Crescent Circle Dragon Krom Kruich, Diabolism Thousand Dragon AI Da Ka, and the Eclipse Dragon Apophis. Are they stronger than the two heavenly dragons? Not if they are at their prime eyes, but despite that, even they would avoid fighting the evil dragons if they can help it, especially now since they are sealed within sacred gears. Still though, even though it is possible to revive them, there is no word of anyone doing that, not even the cow's brigade. I am only telling all of you this as a warning if it actually comes so you can prepare for it. That is all I have to say about them. Azazel becomes more laid back as he relaxes on the desk, leaving the rest concerned about how to deal with the evil dragons should they come back. On their way home from school, Riaz notices Issei putting up a serious face. It's okay Ice, the evil dragons are already extinct. Even though revival is possible, if the cow's brigade refuses to do that, then the dragons themselves will be no threat. Riaz grabs Issei's hand to comfort him. Thank you but you. All I want now is for something to take my mind off of it. As soon as they entered the house, Serafal wasted no time in welcoming them back. Riaz Chan, Ice Kun, welcome home. I finished my shooting early. Both Issei and Riaz immediately took note on what Serafal is wearing in front of them, which is nothing more than a white apron. Serafal Sama. Why are you dressed like that? Riaz asked in dismay. Pause I heard Asia Chan and Riaz Chan did the same many times, and I didn't want to lose my boyfriend, so I decided to do the same. Serafal then embraces Issei. How do you like it Ice Kun? Does it get you all excited? 
Feeling Serafal's almost naked body, Issei had a nosebleed, causing the blood to come out like a garden hose. Issei then faints due to blood lose. Ice Kun. Both Riaz and Serafal yelled simultaneously as Issei passes out. I think I can die peacefully now. Issei said before closing his eyes. As soon as Issei opens his eyes, he found himself resting his head on Serafal's legs with a teary Asia sitting next to him. I am sorry I san I forgot to tell Serafal Sama that you pass out sometimes when me and Butchu would do this. That's okay. I actually enjoy this experience. Then let Levi Tan do it again tomorrow after school. You are still going to do that after you saw me faint. If it makes you happy, then I am willing to do it as many times as you like. I don't think so when he Sama. Sona suddenly shows up behind Sir Afal. Sona Chan. Since when were you home? A few minutes ago and I was utterly dismayed to see my own sister dressing up like this in front of a man. Even though you two are lovers, there are limits to how far you can go, understand? Yes, Sona Chan. Sir Afal said in a low tone. You two ice coon, don't let your lecherous nature influence my sister. Yes, Sona. Issei said out of fear as he sits up. Much to his surprise, Sona gently puts her hand on Issei's while giving off a cute smile. Don't leave me out too, okay? Sona lets go and heads to the kitchen to assist Riaz and the others with dinner, leaving Issei bewildered over Sona's change in behavior. The next day in school. Those op eyes sure look good when the girls are changing. It is like op eye paradise in there. Mitsuda and Motohama are peeping into the girls' locker room once again through a hole, but Issei, conflicted about what he heard from Azazel yesterday, wasn't in the mood and rests on a nearby tree. Hey Ice, aren't you going to look with us? You usually join immediately when we plan to peep. Mitsuda asked. I am sorry, I had a lot to think about last night. Don't get me wrong, Oppai still makes me happy, but I am just mentally exhausted today to enjoy the sights. Ice must have eaten something really bad yesterday. Usually, Oppai would get him more excited than anything else. What is really wrong with you? That's personal. Issei said before ignoring them. Just leave him be. Everyone has their own secrets they want to keep. Mitsuda said. Just as Mitsuda and Motohama get back to the hall to peep, Katane, Murayama, and several other girls came out standing behind them preparing to attack with their shinai. They knew we were watching. Mitsuda whispered. We better make a run for it. Motohama replied. When will you ever learn? Kata said in an angry tone as the girls start jazzing after them. As Murayama follows the rest of the girls, she accidentally trips on a crack. Issei, seeing her trying to keep her balance, rushes and broke her fault by grabbing her arm. Hi ah. As soon as Murayama sees Issei's face, she screams as if she was being harassed, causing Kadis to turn back. Pervert. Hentai. Murayama tries to hit Issei with her shinai, but the latter keeps avoiding. Wait. Wait. I didn't even do anything. I just saw you were about to fall. I only grabbed your arm so you wouldn't. Just so that you could harass me when the other girls aren't there. But I didn't even peep. Hearing this, Murayama stops her attack. You didn't see us. Oh right, we were chasing only the two of you when there should be three. I am guessing that you were hoping to peep when they are gone. Murayama again prepares to strike Issei. Wait. Don't misunderstand Murayama-san. I didn't peek nor did I plan to today. There were a lot of things going on yesterday and I just wasn't in the mood. You should at least be a little grateful since I prevented you from falling. Murayama relaxes after hearing Issei and puts her shinai down. You are right Haidu-kun. Thank you for doing that. Glad we cleared this up. Head away from Murayama. Kadis charges towards Issei and hits him with her shinai. Ow. Issei fell backwards and sees Kadis preparing to hit him again. I hentai. Wait. I didn't do anything. As Issei tries to defend himself, Murayama stops Kadis. It's true Kadis, Haidu didn't do anything, which is why he wasn't seen with Mitsuda and Motohama. Then why did I hear you scream? That was kind of my fault. I wasn't watching my step and tripped on a crack. Haidu grabbed my arm to prevent me from falling. Seeing that he was one of them, I thought he was going to harass me. Haha. <laughs> Issei becomes annoyed. Sorry for being such a pervert. Haddis then turns to Issei. You've lucked out this time Haidu, but the next time you hit, there will be no mercy. Haddis and Murayama then head to the school building. How am I lucked out when I already got hit on the head? Issei asks himself. A scene then switches to a warehouse in the underworld, where a young-looking man wearing a silver robe with accessories is approached by a messenger while being accompanied by several magicians. Master Lucifuge, our leader has finally announced his return. So the old man is finally back. Excellent, it won't be long before the cow's brigade purge all worlds of the filth that live in it. Sister, for you to drop so low to become a servant of the Grimmery, I will enjoy killing you the most. Euclid stands from his chair and leaves with the magicians following as the messenger watches. 
There is one that will breathe our fire. The messenger said before leaving himself. Euclid is seen in an empty warehouse observing a map of what appears to be Ku Academy, marking every opening that is possible for to enter using the transportation circle. A large figure slowly approaches him from behind. Is this the place where my opponent is? Indeed it is Grendel. In order to lure him, we are going to need some live bait and my followers shall retrieve them. Let's get this over with. I want to see this worthy opponent of mine. Patience. Your time will come very soon. Just let them finish their part first. Hurry. The figure then disappears as he moves back. Everything is now in place. All they need to do now is to wait for my orders. Euclid then puts a circle on the school gymnasium. Back in Kuu Academy. Issei is currently walking to the school entrance surrounded by Rias, Akeno, and his girlfriend, Serafal. All of the students who witnessed this are currently in shock, still not knowing why many of the beautiful girls in Kuu Academy prefer to hang out with one of the members of the perverted trio. That ice, always showing off. Mitsuda clenched his right fist as he starts trembling with tears in his eyes. What do all the girls see in him anyway? He is no better than us. Motohama shouted though no one seems to have heard him. Murayama and Katane are also watching the scene, but have a more quiet reaction compared to the other students. There is Hayadu again surrounded by girls as always. I wonder how he got so popular. Back then it was just him, Mitsuda and Motohama that nobody pays attention to. What do you think? Maybe there is another side to Hayadu that none of us know about. Of course, there are still rumors of him blackmailing the girls into doing sexual acts. That is not how it looks like from this perspective. Even Kibikun is hanging out with Haidu. Maybe there really is a secret about Haidu that we don't know about. Oh well. I am getting pretty used to seeing this anyway. Let's go to class Cadis. Okay. Mureyama and Cadis then proceed to the school building. Once free period hit, Issei is in an empty classroom talking to Drake about his new power that emerged during his battle with Hated, after finding out that he won't be able to use it again. What do you mean that I am not able to use it again? It's just as I said, that form you took can't be summoned again, probably due to the fact that your true queen is still unstable. Then how was I able to use it last time? If I had to guess, Zeus may have given you his own blessing. He temporarily loosened the restraints of the boosted gear for you to access this form when your emotions are at its peak, but only until after you defeated Hades. Until you get stronger, you cannot use this power. What about Vali? I heard he was able to use this power without Susama's blessing. Vali awakened it on his own. When you two first met, he was many times stronger than you were. Just as you are getting stronger, he was doing the same. Remember how he easily defeated Pluto. You are right. It will take me a lot more effort to defeat the strongest Grim Reaper if I had to fight him. You still have time to train. Just be patient, partner. Right. Just as Issei opens the door to the hallway, he sees Sona standing right in front of him, apparently trying to do the same. Sona Kaiju. Ice Kun, a vampire from the Carmilla faction, came to the old school building. Azazel Sensei told us to be there. Carmilla faction. You mean the all female vampire faction I read about currently at war with the Teeps faction? Correct. She apparently wants to take Gasper back to Romania. We better go. Issei and Sona then head to the school building. As soon as Sona and Issei arrived to the school building, they saw that the vampire was already there with the occult research club and student council, with Griselda Corda present with them. Issei becomes surprised of the vampire's doe-like appearance with long wavy blonde hair and dark red eyes. She is also wearing a red dress similar to a princess back in the Middle Ages with black thigh-high stockings. Issei notices that there are no shadows when he looks at her feet. Her name is Elmenthal Galmstein, she prefers to be called Elman. As a pure-blooded vampire, she is extremely proud of her race and has a big selfish side, so please be polite. Sona whispered to Issei. Right. Now you know why I could like to borrow Gaspar Vladi. Almenhide is apparently continuing her conversation with Riaz and Azazel, ignoring the fact that Issei and Sona just arrived. There would be no telling what would happen if Gaspar's powers were forcefully released Elman. Gaspar still has no control over it, so that won't be much help for the war you have with the Teeps faction. Riaz warned Almenhide. That's true, but it might be even worse, considering that the Teeps faction not only has a long Inus possessor in the form of Valerie Teeps, but I heard they have a secret weapon that is rumored to be able to easily put down the five dragon kings. This won't be good not only for our race, but for our county as well. They will only negotiate through a battle of strength. Issei takes a look at Gaspar, who is visibly shaken after hearing that his friend Valerie is a Long Inus possessor fighting on behalf of the Teeps faction. Elmenhide then presents a file to Azazel. He opens it and begins reading the contents. I see. So this meeting is for diplomatic reasons in order for us to make peace with the Carmilla faction in exchange to temporarily lend Gaspar. Indeed. 
Our queen, Carmilla Sama, has grown tired of this war, so we decided that a truce should be hold with the church and fallen angels. This only angers Azazel due to Omenhide's methods. Issei himself is also getting irritated and decides not to maintain his silence. Can you guarantee that Gaspar will be returned to us if we have to lend him over? It is not like we will, but that is something I need to ask. Omenhide turns to Issei with hateful eyes. Even though you are the Seker Yuite, you have no right to question me, since you are nothing more than a servant of Rhea's Gremory Sama. Answer his question. I refuse to have one of my servants sacrificed for your war just for a truce. Rhea's told Omenhide. Very well. It hasn't been decided that he will be sacrificed, but I prefer to have this settled immediately. And as for you Azazel Sama, if you want to be an advisor to one of the sides then be my guest. Like I will work with such a selfish race. Suit yourself. I humbly thank you Rhea's Gremory Sama for allowing a vampire to your territory. Omenhide puts on a cold smile as she gets up from the couch and leaves, angering the Gremory team, Azazel, and Griselda. I hope somebody can fill me in since I came in the middle of it. Issei said. Back in the Haidu residence. So the Teeps faction have the Sephiroth Grawl, a long inus that allows the possessor to make contact with the principle of life, particularly how life and soul are made, correct? Issei asked. Yes, but for the Teeps faction to have the Holy Grail makes it even more dangerous in battle. That's why they want Gaspar to use his powers to stop them even though they knew the risks. Ria's answers. We shouldn't get involved in their affairs, but for them to do so makes it worse. Seraphil also expressed frustration after hearing the whole story. So what can be done? Akeno asked. Me, but you and Azazel Sensei plan to go to Romania to find out more about Gaspar Kuhn's powers. There is no way we will give up our friend, but at the same time, the vampires show that we need to know more. Kiba answered. We will be leaving in a couple of days. Let's get ready. Ria said. Yes, but you. Kiba then leaves the house back to the apartment. I also want to come. Gaspar said, much to the surprise of everyone else. Valerie is my friend who helped me escape and gave me a chance to make friends with all of you, so I want to return the favor. I will not sit down when my friends are risking their lives for my sake. I want to become strong for all of you. That's why I am going. Gasper said with determined eyes. Everyone smiles and decide to make a promise to assist should they ever be called there. Gasper is my friend. Should something happen, I will protect him at all cost. Kaneko said. So will I. It is my job to protect my junior. Issei also makes his declaration. I still have a grudge over that little vampire from earlier, so take me with you. Zenobia said. Arara. If all of you are going then I should join also. Okeno said in a light manner. I will report this situation to Serzich's Chan and will assist once I am done. Seraphil also makes the promise. Without the rest needing to say anything, Rhea smiles after hearing their determination to help her servant. Then let's all agree to help Gaspar when the time comes. Yes. Everyone said it once. Rias then turns to Sona. Until we get back, I will leave you with my team. I will make sure that nothing happens to them. After hearing Sona's promise, Rias leaves to pack up. A few days later. The Haidu residents said their goodbyes to Rias, Kiba, and Azazel. Issei then works with Ravel on finding a magician that the former can make a pact with after hearing from Mephisto Fels, the director of the Magician Council, that the Gremory group were finally eligible. So far, none that Ravel is recommending is considered to be a full fit for Issei. Well if it isn't the Seker Yuite Chin. Kuroka suddenly shows up from behind with La Fay Pendergon following. Issei panics out of shock. Kuroka. What are you doing here all of a sudden? I came to help Shirin with her training Naya. Did you forget that Shirin is allowing me to stay as long as I train her and Jaya Kun? Ice, if you don't mind, how about I help you in your search for a magician since I am one myself. La Fay offers her services. I don't mind. It is mainly Ravel doing the work, so it would be nice for her to get help. Issei is not in the mood to deal with Kuroka, so he lets her do as she pleases. During the night. As Issei tries to sleep at night with Asia, he found himself lonely without Rias, since she has slept with him for many nights, and hugs Asia for comfort. Sorry Asia, do you mind if I stay like this for a while? Not at all Isan. You are such a spoiled child after all. Asia said. Just as Issei was about to fall asleep, he felt something clinging onto him with something soft pressing his back. This feeling. Don't tell me that. Issei turns around to see Seraphol smiling next to him naked under his blanket. Surprise Ice Kun. Since Ria's Chan is gone, I decided to use this opportunity to sleep with you and Asia Chan. What? Issei yelled. Seraphol Sama. Since when did you get here? Asia yelled out of surprise. Ten minutes ago. I snuck in and hid beneath the blankets before making my surprise move on my boyfriend. Since Ria's Chan and Asia Chan sleep with him all the time, I decided that I wanted to do the same. 
How Asia becomes dismayed after hearing Sir Afal's reason. I knew you were planning something like this, Wani Sama. Sona said after she was rushing into the room in her pajamas. Sona. Issei becomes very surprised at Sona's sudden entrance. This is not how Amayu should behave. Go back to your room. No. I want to sleep with my boyfriend since Ria's Chan and Asia Chan get to do that all the time. They have their way and we have ours. Come on Wani Sama, get up. Sona begins pulling her sister's naked body from Issei, but Serafal only tightens her grip. Stop being so stubborn. No. I want to sleep with my boyfriend and that is final. After many more attempts to get Serafal to let go, Sona gives in, but decides that she is going to sleep in Issei's bed to make sure her sister doesn't do anything strange to Issei and vice versa. You better not tell anyone in the student council about this. Sona warned Issei. Don't worry. I don't want to get killed by the student body anyway. Issei then had trouble sleeping after what went on earlier. The next day in Ku Academy. Murayama and Kadis were walking down the hall in their kendo armor, Bogu, preparing for the kendo club, when a hooded figure spots them. Excuse me. I am looking for a student named Haidu Issei. I really need to talk to him. Is he here? He is in the boys' locker room changing. Murayama reluctantly answered. What do you need to talk to him about? Kadis asked. Nothing much. I just need to have a few words with him before I leave. Thank you for showing me the way. As the figure walks away, Cadis notices a knife handle sticking out of his cloak. Murayama, that guy has a knife. Realizing that she put Issei in danger, Murayama and Cadis raise their shinai. You are planning to hurt him, aren't you? Murayama asked. Now what makes you think that? There is a knife handle sticking out of your cloak. Cadis responded. The figure did not respond and just heads forward, leading Murayama and Cadis to attack. We won't let you do such things in school. Both girls yelled as they prepare to strike. Useless. As soon as the bamboo sword strike, the figure disappeared, leaving nothing but his cloak. How did he before Cadis can finish, Murayama interrupted her. We have no time for that now. Haidu is in danger so we have to hurry. Right. The girls then head straight to the boys' locker room. As soon as Murayama and Cadis made it to the boys' locker room, they see Issei fighting three magicians wearing his scale mail armor. Issei is being hit with shards of ice casted by one of the magicians, but blocked most of it with his gauntlet. Issei then goes for a punch as one of the magicians creates a defense magic circle, but was easily broken through and hit. As Issei goes after another, the third magician appears behind him, causing Murayama to break silence. I do, behind you. Huh? Issei turns around and punches the magician coming towards him, sending him crashing into the wall. He then turns to the two girls watching him battle. Murayama. Cadis. Get out of here. The soul magician still standing attempts to attack the two girls as he raises his hand and begins casting a spell. Before he can finish, he was tackled to the ground. Leave them alone. The magicians get up, preparing for another round, but small magic circles begin to appear. After the circles disappeared, they then activated a teleportation magicircle, apparently retreating. We will meet again. The magician standing on the middle turns his attention to Murayama and Cadis and aims a beam of white light at them, knocking them unconscious. Witnessing this attack, Issei charges at them. What did you do to them? They have seen too much. All I did was erase their memories. Until next time Sekar Yuite. The three magicians then disappeared before Issei can touch them. Issei then hears explosions coming from other parts of the school. I better hurry. When Issei reaches one of the affected classroom, he can see that almost all of the class is asleep due to the spell put by the devils. He then spots one conscious girl, who appears to have seen what happened as she is trembling in fear with tears coming out. Hey, are you okay? What happened here? Suspicious looking people attacked our school. Kaneko san, Ravel san, and Gaspar kun saved me, but then all of them got covered by a bright light and then disappeared. Realizing that his juniors were kidnapped and are being held hostage, Issei banged his left fist in the corridor. The rest of the Grimory group as well as the student council met up in the old school building, where the latter revealed that the investigation is underway and that the repairs to the school will be handled by them. As for the students, they plan to use Azazel's mind-erasing device to erase their memories of the incident, despite knowing that they can't erase their trauma caused by the attack. So it turns out that the magicians that attacked were stray magicians, those who were exiled by the council and currently working for the Cow's Brigade. Akeno told everyone. If we can, I want to make it a first priority to save my juniors who were kidnapped. Issei declares. I will also never forgive them as a teacher of this school. Please allow us to perform the rescue operation. Roswis also added herself in. Sylphie decided to make a stand. Um everyone, I just talked to Kaichu earlier before this meeting has even started and we both agree that protecting lives comes first over finding who did it. 
We received a message from the culprits to meet them in the closest station to the school, and that is what we will do. One question though, how were the magicians able to pass through the barriers protecting Ku Academy? I thought only those with similar auras as the top members of the three factions can pass through them. Irina asked. It's possible that there is a traitor among us Haidu Kun, but we have no leads on who it is. That would be dealt with for another time. Right now, saving the kidnapped students is more important. Tsubaki answered. Zenovi immediately summons X Durandal. I want to teach those strain magicians for kidnapping our friends. Tell us what we have to do. Knowing where they will be, we cannot use our strongest attack since the station will collapse. Here is what we have to do. Sona begins explaining her plan as the rest listen to her in silence. After reaching the station, they took an elevator down to the floor. Benny and Loop Garu are tasked to watch for possible reinforcements. After reaching the floor, they saw over 100 magicians preparing for battle. Despite begin outnumbered, none of them show even the slightest amount of fear. All right, let's teach them a lesson. Sona declared. Thanks to Sona's skills as a tactician, many of the magicians were subdued with barely any damage to the point where Asay didn't have to use his balance breaker. Out of desperation, the magician summoned three chimera creatures resembling a snake, bird, and turtle. Like those creatures can stop me. Zenovia easily disposed them. Ifufu. It looks like I can finally unleash my abilities. In her Maiko outfit, Akeno shocks the entire battle arena with holy lightning, being careful enough not to hit her allies. I guess sucking the dragon's energy from Ice Kun's arm would have probably worked from the start, but then again, I was afraid that it would collapse the whole station, so I figured that the compatibility between Saji and Ice Kun would be the next best thing. Sona commented. But it looks like after seeing the strength of the Grimory group, it looks like I am going to have to push my time even further. Seeing Sona's intense eyes, the Citri group also starts becoming frightened not only of their master, but also the Grimory group, after witnessing their strength in battle. I don't think I want to fight them anymore. B2. Both Hanakai and Kusaka express their displeasure at the thought of fighting the Gremory group. The magic circle suddenly appears beneath the feet of both teams. What is going on? Issei asked. One of the magicians got up with a smile on his face. Time for you to meet our boss. The next thing they saw was an empty white room, but before they can figure out where they are, they were spotted by Ravel, Kaneko, and Gasper. Thy Sama. Thy Senpai. Thy Senpai. They all rush towards Issei out of joy and relief, apparently unscathed, although Gasper is shown to have a couple of bruises on his face. Gasper, what happened to you? Issei asks after seeing Gasper's condition. We were being scanned by the magicians using a magic circle, but Gasper tried to resist capture, and this is the result. Ravel explained. Those guys, I am going to make sure they pay for this. Then turn around. Euclid's voice was heard. When everyone did what they were told, they saw a man wearing a silver robe, but have yet to figure out his identity. Are you the one behind this attack? Sona asked. Yes I am. I suppose you are wondering why I did what I did. There are two reasons for that. First is that since there are many magicians on our side, they cannot control themselves very well, since the old Mag faction and the hero faction are both gone, and they became curious of the Sekiruite's power after hearing a report about him. The second reason is this. One of the walls began to move, showing what appears to be a laboratory which Euclid calls a factory. We plan to mass-produce Phoenix Tears to be distributed in the black market in order to gather the needed funds, and in order to do that, we needed to produce many high-class Devil's Phoenix you can see in the capsules. Many have stopped functioning as this factory is planning to be abandoned, all of them have stopped functioning. We needed Ravel in order to improve the accuracy of its production. Issei took a look inside of the capsule to see that the clone body is already dead. He then turns to Ravel, who is extremely depressed after knowing what they needed her for. How repulsive. Sona said with disgust. Yes. Now that you know, perhaps it is time for me to introduce you to a friend on mine. Euclid summons a dark green magic circle. Britra takes the form of a snake using Saji's shadow and is dismayed by what he is seeing. This color. No way. That dragon was supposed to be dead. The color of the dragon gate could only mean one thing. Saji braces himself. The legendary dragon, crime force dragon Grendel. Come on out. The large dark green dragon emerges from the circle and gives a loud roar which shakes the whole room. You have kept me waiting long enough. Where is my opponent? Grendel. I thought you were destroyed by the original Beowulf. Grendel takes a look at Issei and Vritra. Oh good, it looks like the red one and Vritra are here. Guhahaha. It looks like I am going to have a lot of fun today. I heard that Drag was sealed as a sacred gear from this man, but I also heard that this host was the greatest of them all. So will you entertain me today? Hearing Grendel's voice, Drag immediately responds. So the cow's brigade did revive you after all. 
partner, this fight cannot be avoided, but Grendel is a ferocious evil dragon that you must not hold back against. Don't even show a bit of sympathy. Understood. The jewel and the boosted gear begins to glow. Welsh dragon balance breaker. Everyone stay back. This battle will be between me and him. Issei's body is then covered in thick armor and immediately charges towards Grendel. This is exactly what I want. Give me what you have. Welsh Dragon a crook. Charge solid impact. Issei thickens his armor and punches Grendel head on. Despite getting thrown back, Grendel is not impressed. Is that really all you got? The Great Drake got weakened by that much? I was expecting something much better. Are you serious? That was an enhanced punch I just threw earlier. The lack of damage Grendel sustained greatly surprised Issei. It looks like we have no choice. Let's transform to True Queen. Understood. Issei then does his chant. I, who is about to awaken, am the Seker Yuite who holds the truth of King up high. Holding the infinite hopes and unbreakable dreams and walking the path of righteousness. I will become the Emperor of the Crimson Dragon. And I will lead you to the path of heaven glowing and deep crimson light. Cardinal Crimson Full Drive. Issei's armor transforms from red to crimson in an instant. Seeing this transformation, Grendel laughs. Crimson. That is a transformation I have yet to see until now. I see, so you have become stronger than before. Entertain me even more. Like I will let you do what you want. Let's go drag. No holding back. Issei and Grendel then proceed to charge. The next scene shows a dimension within the jewel of the boosted gear. Inside of a dark room, a large black western dragon is seen sleeping. A loud roar was heard, forcing the dragon to open his eyes. Hearing Grendel's voice, the dragon unleashes a loud roar of his own. Grendel. The dragon shouted in anger. As Grendel and Issei charge at each other, the large dragon attempts to strike with his claws, but using his high speed, Issei dodges the strike and hits one of his own on Grendel's face. Despite the high impact, Grendel did not receive much damage, much to Issei's shock. Careful partner, Grendel has one of the hardest scale among the extinct dragons. Attacks like this won't work. Greg explained. But I can't go any further than this due to my surroundings. Using Crimson Blaster will destroy the entire room. Indeed. Then you are going to have to change your strategy rather than just powering yourself up. Changing my strategy, huh? Before Issei can give himself time to think, Grendel launches a fireball from his mouth towards him, causing Issei to move at high speed. After dodging the attack, Grendel shows up in front of Issei and strikes him hard with his fist, slamming him to the ground. What insane power. Issei said as he struggles to get up. Uhahahaha. <laughs> get squashed. Grendel prepares to stomp Issei with his giant foot, but Issei rolled out of the way just in time and flew above. The punch he did earlier was even more powerful than Sererg's and when he's wearing the lion's armor. Guess I will have to make my strikes harder. Issei flew up and begins boosting his armor. Issei then landed a hard kick to Grendel's jaw. Despite that, Grendel shows no signs of slowing down. Issei then started a fist fight with Grendel, successfully landing multiple strikes, but unable to keep the large dragon down. Partner, this guy also enjoys receiving damage. You have to finish him in order to stop him. Are you serious? Here I come, Drag. Grendel launches a more powerful fireball towards Issei. Issei responds by charging through the fireball. Time to put my plan into action. Let's see how you like my punch mixed with Ascalon's power. Issei strikes Grendel with his right fist on the stomach. Solid impact booster. The impact of the punch sends Grendel to the ground with blue blood coming out of his mouth. However, Grendel gets up almost immediately despite the damage. That hurts. This is the best fight I've had in a long time. Let's continue fighting until one of our bodies shattered. What a crazy dragon. Greg is just as dismayed as Issei after witnessing Grendel's desire to keep fighting. Before we keep going, I decided that I am going to kill all of you so prepare yourself. Hey. Your opponent is me. Leave my comrades out of it. Too late. Grendel expands his stomach greatly and unleashes a huge fireball, which soon begins to split. It's okay Haidu kun We will be able to block it. Sona prepares a defense spell, but before the fireball can separate completely, Issei's left gauntlet begins turning black, releasing an ominous aura. Grendel. The deep voice is heard shouting. Greg, what is going on? Issei asked. So he finally decided to accept a host. Partner, explanations can be done later, use your new power. Breathe fire. Understood. Issei then took a deep breath. Boost 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 boost. Transfer. Issei unleashes the flames from his body, but something unexpected happens. 
Blue flames came out of Issei's body instead and at a very wide range, extinguishing Grendel's flames and burning some of his scales off. Blue flames. How could this be? I think it's time for us to retreat Grendel. Euclid said. Hold on. I still want to fight. You are still at your tuning stage. Any more and your body will turn back into a corpse, especially after what we just witnessed. The magic communication circle appears next to Euclid. Good news, it appears that they are having trouble with the white one. You can fight them when we get there. Oh. So it's Albion this time. Alright, my playtime with you will be put on hold, but next time we meet, I will kill you all. Guhahaha. I suppose after all of this, I think I should introduce myself. I am Lucifuge. Euclid Lucifuge. So that would explain how you are able to let stray magicians into Kuo Academy. Sona said. Please tell my elder sister, Graphia, if you are living as you like by abandoning the role of Lucifuge, then I have the right to do the same. Soon enough, all of you will meet the true boss of the Cow's Brigade. Until then. Euclid and Grendel then disappears through the magic circle. As soon as they left, the space around them starts to collapse. We better evacuate. Under Sona's command, Akeno activates a teleportation magic circle, while Ravel and Sona release magic circles towards the capsules. Everyone was then evacuated safely. Back in the Haidu residence. Issei is seen talking to Ravel, Sona, and Seraphil about the battle, after the situation was reported to the Underworld Council. So that's what happened. I have already reported to Serzich's Chan about the Cow's Brigade and the Evil Dragons, but for Grafia Chan's brother to be involved with this is quite surprising. Seraphil said after hearing Sona's report. We have already delivered the capsules to the Underworld authorities. An investigation is already underway to stop the production. Ravel reported. Seraphil then turns to Issei. For you to have a special power all of a sudden, I wonder what could have triggered it. I don't know. There is nothing in history about Drake shooting blue flames. There are certain dragons that can breathe such flames, but none of them known were sealed within sacred gears, although there are some labeled missing. Sona stated. Something did change though before I expelled the blue flames. Before Grendel's fireball separated, my left gauntlet turned black, and I heard a deep voice shouting Grendel's name. Drake referred to this change as if there was another dragon within my boosted gear. He then told me to use this power, and I guess you already saw the result. Issei added his own story. If you are right, this would be the first time I've heard of a sacred gear where two dragons reside in. But if that is the case, then I don't think even the eight pawn pieces Ice Kun is given would have been enough without some turning into mutation pieces. Seraphal stated. Ice Kun has four mutation pieces already, and the fact that this power has remained dormant until now made it possible for Rias to turn him into her servant. Even if the dragon wakes up now, there would be no negative feedback, since Issei's body not only has already adapted to Drake's power, but also became a dragon as well. The only limit, like when Ice Kun first uses the boosted gear, is how much his body will be able to handle this new power, but given that Ice Kun can promote to True Queen, it is safe to say that he will be able to handle it very well, even if it fully awakens, as long as it doesn't mix with his full abilities using Triana. Wait Sona, are you saying that if the new dragon awakens, I won't be able to use Triana, as long as I use the powers of the new dragon? You can either use one or the other, but you still haven't fully mastered True Queen yet since it is still unstable. Until you do, combining the armor of these two dragons at full power would be too much for your body to handle. I see. That is only in theory Ice Kun. Did Drake tell you anything else? No. Drake hasn't spoken a word ever since the battle. I wonder what is going on. I guess only time will tell. Seraphal said. But even so, for Grafia Sen's brother to get involved, things can only get much worse as he isn't even in charge of this whole thing. I cannot disagree with you on that, but we don't know how powerful they really are, so let's lay low for a while until we we find out. In the meantime, I also suggest that you find yourself a magician to make a pact with, Ice Kun. Sona suggested. I am already on it. Ravel announced as she started looking through different files. Within the jewel of the boosted gear. Drake is standing in the front of what appears to be a large black door with a gold coiled dragon insignia in the middle of it. So you have finally awakened. Drake, it has been very long since I have last awakened. The voice was heard beyond the door. I was about to say the same. What was it that woke you? Was it my new host or the evil dragons? The evil dragons, where are they? They are alive. The group known as the Cow's Brigade revived them. Such a disgusting bunch for them to betray me and got me sealed with you in this prison. The evil dragons are who me and my host are fighting right now. If you want your revenge then you are going to have to work with my host. The voice lets out a laugh. Kukuku. Are you kidding me? All of your previous hosts I was with fell to the corruption of my powers, which is the reason why you put me to sleep here in the first place. Not this one. 
What makes you so sure that he won't fall like the rest? Because he is the greatest possessor of me. Barely anyone was able to reach the stages he went through. The voice went silent for a moment. I see. If sharing a host allows me to exact my revenge on the evil dragons, then so be it. Release me. Bragg begins breathing fire towards the door. The door then begins to glow as the insignia turns, unlocking it. As the door slides open, a large black western dragon comes out of it and stares face to face with Drag. So Drag, who is my so-called host. A second head suddenly emerges next to the dragon's main head. The one named to say hi to. Meanwhile in the Haidu residence. The Citri sisters are currently taking a bath together with Sona showing an unpleasant face towards their awful. Oni Sama, please tell me you are not going to sleep with Ice Kun again. Eh? Why not, Sona Chan? You did the same thing a couple of nights before. That's because you won't let go. Seriously, Oni Sama, considering your age, I thought you would be able to handle relationships more like an adult. How rude. I am an adult. And it is because of that, I made my own decision to sleep with Ice Kun. What kind of an adult would dress up as a magical girl in public and try to act like the character? Hey. That is called method acting in case you didn't know Sona Chan. Seraphil pouts. You don't need to do any method acting to act like a child. You are so mean so tan. I told you not to add tan. Then don't call me a child. Seraphil then splashes water to Sona's face. Then quit acting like a child. Sona splashes back. You are the one acting like a child now. Both Sona and Seraphil soon started having a splash fight similar to Zenovia and Arena in the underground pool. Moo. You are to strict Sona-chan. I think I am going to make you smile a bit more. Wait one Isama, what are you high? Seraphil begins tickling Sona's underarms. Haha. <laughs> you always have that serious look on your face. You need to learn laugh more. Seraphil starts showing a perverted look on her face. Be please stop, oh one Isama. Sona tries to resist the urge to laugh. Not until you start laughing. Drool starts coming out of Seraphil's mouth as Sona starts to moan. Like I will. Then it looks like I will have to go even further. Seraphil begins wiggling her fingers even faster. Aha! Ahahahaha! <laughs> Stop it! Sona finally broke down. Unable to resist her urges, Seraphil continues her torture. You need to smile more Sona-chan. I rarely get a chance to see you like this, so I am not going to waste it. Ahaha! <laughs> Ahahaha! <laughs> This isn't fun, one sama Cut it out. Sona had tears coming out of her eyes. Are you going to let me sleep with Ice Kun without bothering us? For my sister to go this far aha. Two can play at this game. Sona then tickles Seraphil in the same place, causing her to jump and return back to her senses. Aha. Sona-chan, what are you doing? Ahahaha. I am not going to let my sister win my decision through such devious means. Aha. Seraphil refuses to stop despite being tickled by Sona. Hey, stop it. Ahahaha. You stop first, Sona-chan. Aha. Their tickle fight can be heard by Zenovia and Arena, who are just outside the bathroom. What are they doing in there? Zenovia asked. I don't know, but if Ice Kun were here, he would have a nosebleed listening to them. Arena responded. As Issei heads toward one of the training room with Ravel, they see Kuroka training Kaneko and Gaspar in Senjutsu with Lefei watching them. Kuroka then spots Issei and rushes to embrace him. Ah. Sekiryu Chin. I just came back from battling an evil dragon, so I am tired. Let me rest on you so I can heal Naya. An evil dragon? Both Ravel and Issei yelled. Yes. That is the reason why I want to make Shirin and Jayakun stronger Naya. After Issei finds a chair to sit on, Kuroka wastes no time and leans on him. So what is your story about your encounter with an evil dragon? Ravel asked. The dragon named Ai Da Ka came and attacked us. If I recall, Sensei told me that Ai Da Ka is one of the top three strongest of the evil dragons that died. It was killed by the hero Rot Aona in a state where it was basically sealed. Correct. We were traveling the world seeking strong foes and mysteries when that dragon attacked us. That dragon was indeed the strongest foe we ever faced. No matter how much we punched, kicked, or cut, the dragon shows no signs of going down and continues to laugh. He definitely wasn't normal. The fake continues. After that, Grendel shows up with a man wearing a robe wanting to fight us, but Ai Da Ka wouldn't let him and instead began fighting each other. The situation quickly turns disastrous, so we decided to leave temporarily. Even Vali who happily fought was an incredible idiot Naya. You shouldn't be like that, okay? Just stay who you are right now. I am not like Vali or the evil dragons. But boy. Now let's test Shirin to see if she is concentrating fully Naya. You are going to do that again? Yep. Kuroka takes Issei's right hand and puts it down to her breasts. What? 
Issei immediately gets excited over the softness of Kuroka's apai. Kuroka's apai is so soft. For me to get to touch them again, I am truly in joy. Hurry for apai. Issei yelled in his thoughts. Kuroka. What are you doing? This time only Ravel reacts while Kaneko continues to stay the way she is. My my. It looks like Shirin is doing better in controlling her urges. Any more than that, and she will soon surpass me Naya. Thanks for the help Sekiru Chin. Before Kuroka goes back to them, she turns towards Issei one more time. Before I forget, if you are looking for a magician to make a pact with, how about I recommend Lafay? What? Everyone in the room becomes surprised at Kuroka's suggestion. Kuroka-san. There is no loss considering that she is an expert magician coming from a well-known family, you know. That may be true, but the fact that she is in the cow's brigade creates an obstacle between her and Aisama. Ravel protested against the pact. Then at least consider interviewing her first, little birdie Chan. My name is Ravel. Before the arguing can continue, Issei stops Ravel. Calm down. Let's just hear what Lafay has to say. If Aisama said so then fine. You better answer every question truthfully, understand? Yes. Lafay said out of fear. After several minutes of getting to know Lafay, Ravel becomes shocked hearing all of her accomplishments as a magician. Impossible. What's wrong Ravel? Lafay san has exceeded the standards of the magicians I recommended you, but the fact that she supported the cow's brigade is still a big issue. I guess that is good enough for now Naya. Hopefully, things will change for the better for us. Kuroka then leaves to focus on Kaneko and Gasper. In Kuo Academy. Finally I get to relax after a hard day's work. From the cow's brigade to the evil dragons, it feels as though school is the most relaxing place for me. Issei thought. Hey Ice, what's up? Motohama puts his arm around Issei's head. Seen any good op I lately? Mitsuda later joins. What are you guys doing? Issei asked. Take a look. Motohama takes out a DVD, something that Issei got excited about as soon as he lay his eyes on it. Are you serious? This porn DVD is one of the rarest ever to contain an Anime Bishoujo magical girl. Where did you guys get this? I made a deal of trading half of my old school of action DVDs for the more modern ones. What do you say, Ice? Want to watch it with us? Are you kidding? Of course I will watch it. Before Issei could take the DVD, Seraphal suddenly came in and took it from them. You are not supposed to discuss inappropriate things when you are in class. According to Sona-chan, it disrupts morals so you can have it back after class. What? But you were hugging ice when you first came here, and now you are against such acts. Mitsuda pointed out. In fact, Sona-chan said if I can control public morals in my own class, she will let me be with Ice-kun. Don't say that in front of my friends. Issei protested. What is this all about, Ice? Motohama and Mitsuda yelled. As Issei tries to desperately get out of the situation, Mireyama finds herself staring at him as Cadis and Asia are talking to each other. A flashback occurs within Mireyama's mind of Issei saving her in his scale Larmer from one of the magicians trying to attack her and Cadis, revealing that she remembers the incident. What are you, Haidu? Mireyama said in her thoughts. Seraphal then takes notice of Mireyama as if she senses something within her, but decides to let it go for the moment. Issei then decides to take a nap under a tree near the tennis field. When he opens his eyes, he saw that he is no longer in the school, but in a large dark space. What is this? Where am I? As Issei continues looking around, a dragon emerges from the ground behind him. Hello Ice. Ah. Issei immediately freaks out upon seeing a dragon head emerging from the ground. Finally I get to meet my host. Another head appears behind Issei. Stop doing that. What do you mean by host? It is just as I said. The real dragon finally appears in front of Issei, causing the two heads to vanish from the ground. I have been asleep for a long time. I have finally awakened upon hearing the sounds of an evil dragon within the boosted gear's dimensional plane. I am the evil dragon, Adaja, of the Slavic mythology. Are you my worthy possessor? Issei goes into a state of shock upon seeing that an evil dragon is in front of him. Issei finds himself in the boosted gear's dimensional plane after falling asleep under a tree near Kuo Academy. Much to Issei's dismay, he is also inside the home of the evil dragon, Adaja, who has the ability to multiply his heads on his own body and even other surfaces. Wait. So you are telling me that I had an evil dragon within the boosted gear all along? Where the heck were you all this time? Issei yells. I was put in this dimensional plane where I would sleep until I could find a host worthy enough. Until that time, my power would remain dormant and unresponsive, which is why it seems like only Drag lives inside of this prison, you call the boosted gear. So why is an evil dragon in my boosted gear? Adaja puts his head closer to Issei, staring intensively at his host, much to the latter's discomfort. Do you know why I have finally awakened Ice? 
it is because of the roar of an evil dragon. I was once thought of as one of the strongest evil dragons before I was sealed here, killing everyone including other legendary creatures to prevent them from reaching my territories. After I was left for dead by Saint George, who wielded Ascalon during the time, I asked for help from the other evil dragons to finish him off, but it turns out that it was a setup to weaken me, since I would attack them if they crossed as well. Not long after Drag's soul was sealed in a sacred gear, members of the three factions tried to seal me up as well in my weakened state, but my dark powers have rendered them mad. Unable to seal me within a sacred gear of my own, I was forced into the boosted gear, as it was strong enough to suppress my dark energy, and was forced to share it with that arrogant and prideful red dragon. The Dodger begins expressing his disdain of sharing his home with Drag. So you were the dragon that was said to be killed by Saint George, but if you weren't dead and was instead sealed within the boosted gear due to the evil dragons, how come your powers remain dormant instead of Drag's? The previous hosts that tried to unseal my powers also went mad as a result due to my aura. I am not as powerful as Drake, but the damage done to my host makes me a more dangerous dragon. There were a few who were able to use me temporarily, but in the end, the results remain the same. It turns out only those with strong willpower shall be able to possess me. Believing that my powers and my quest for vengeance against the evil dragons was killing off our hosts, I was sealed in within this dimensional plane by Drake, where I decided to sleep until the time comes when a suitable host is found. Issei becomes nervous after listening to the story. Hearing why you were sealed is kind of scary, considering that I am also your host. Greg believed that you were strong enough to become my possessor. If what he says is true then you shouldn't have any problems using my power. But that's still dangerous. There is still a chance for two to get corrupted by the rest if I start. Believe me Ice, I wouldn't want to be denied of the opportunity to face off against those who betrayed me, and you going mad is not going to help. I will hold back should you go mad, but then it shows that you are not ready if I do, and therefore you will never gain access to me again. Are you serious? You mean that I only get one chance to overcome your power, and if I fail, you will go back to sleep. This is exactly why I hate having a host to do my revenge. I need someone who can overcome this should they wish for my assistance. All of my former hosts who gained access never did live a descent life, you know. But if Drag trusts you to be my host, then that shows potential. Otherwise you will have to fight the evil dragons on your own with Drag, which doesn't help considering that the red dragon wants you to stay away from them. Issei gives himself some time to think. Okay. If you can help me defeat the evil dragons, I will accept this challenge. Then summon me when you face an evil dragon yet again. Farewell. The bright light flashes in front of Issei, bringing him back to the tree he rested on. So I am back. Jeez, it's always one thing after another for me. When am I going to have my peace? I see. So that's what happened. Issei immediately heads over to the occult research club and the student council in the old school building, telling Sona about a Daja and why he became his possessor. Amazing for Ice Kun to have two dragons instead of one. Akeno is more enthusiastic about the news. But the fact that the evil dragon has powers that can corrupt the host for a single use is a problem. Sona. However, is more cautious about it. Drake believes that I could overcome a Daja's power, which is why he released him so I could be his possessor in our fight with the evil dragons. It will certainly give us an advantage during the fight, but I think it is better for you to figure out and practice a Dodge's abilities. Kiba responded. No doubt. I honestly thought St. George slayed that evil dragon, but for him to be inside of Ice's boosted gear. That sounds amazing. Yes, yes. With two powerful dragons on our side, we just became even more powerful. Zenovia and Arena enthusiastically added themselves in. I've never even heard of an evil dragon inside of a sacred gear. You truly are a unique possessor, Ice. Afis suddenly shows up with Rasse on her head, much to Issei's surprise. Afis, Where did you come from? Hiroka and Lafay are out with Vali, so they told me to come here instead. Anyway, where are Ravel and Gasper? Issei asked. Ravel is currently sorting out the document searching for the magician that would most suit you, considering that Lafay still has the status of terrorist, but she never ruled out the possibility considering her abilities as a magician. Gaspar is somewhere training with Kaneko and Kuroka out of request to prepare for his trip to Romania. In the meanwhile, I think it is best to use the new dragon as a last resort. I don't want to have Ice Kun corrupted before we face the Cow's Brigade. Sona suggested. That's a good idea. I have no idea what kind of power a Daja has so using it might become a hazard. The meeting then ended. Back in the Haidu residence. Amazing for Ice Kun to have another dragon inside of a sacred gear. With this, I can add a new dragon to my show. Serafal reacts enthusiastically to the news. I think that is only from your view Serah. We don't even know what this dragon can do as a sacred gear. Issei responded to Serafal's enthusiasm. 
Plus, before Ice Kun can even use this power, he still needs to overcome the dark energy that drives the dragon's previous hosts mad. Sona added. I think Ice Kun is strong enough if Drake trust him that much that he would release the evil dragon, Adaja, for him to use. Let's hope so Sarah. I don't want to go mad just because of one mistake. Zoom zoom in. Afa said as she watches Opai Dragon. Oh, that remains me that I haven't given Drake his medicine yet. Excuse me. Issei left the room and moves to the kitchen where he starts pouring the medicine into the jewel of the boosted gear over the sink. What a relief. It feels like all of my troubles are going away by just a sprinkle of this. Do you feel that your scar has healed a little bit? It is not that easy to heal a scar caused by something I have never experienced for. I don't know how long it will actually take for my heart to heal. Seriously Drake, you are way too sensitive for these kind of things. Among all this time, I never had the thought of a heavenly dragon who needs medicine. What happened to the prideful red dragon that the leaders of the three factions were afraid of? The Dodger added himself in, unable to stay away from the unique conversation. The things that are going inside my partner's head is causing a huge influence in the underworld. The change is unbearable considering what I was previously known as before I was sealed. Now that you mentioned it, Ice's head is filled with perverted thoughts. Not long after waking up, most of the images I see are up high. The next thing I see is Ice touching them and sucking them. Never seen such an obsession over women's breasts and it's quite disgusting. What did you say? Op I is the greatest thing for males of all races to lay their hands on. An evil dragon wouldn't understand that. Issei protested. Ice's obsession with breasts scarred Drake, due to him being being known by almost everyone as Op I Dragon and Chichuyuite, instead of the feared Red Dragon Emperor he once was. The office shows up after seeing that the show is currently on commercial. Kukuku. Are you telling me that Drake is known as Op I Dragon among everyone? Is that the reason why he needs medicine? The Dodger holds back his laughter. I didn't care at first, but soon my partner starts coming up with Opai related techniques using my power. Did you know that when he activated his balance breaker, he did it by poking breasts? He did the same thing to deactivate Juggernaut Drive. It was so horrible that I kept crying non-stop. Greg complains to a Dodger. Yahahahahaha. <laughs> I can't believe it. The Red Dragon Emperor developed a fear of breasts and is now like this because of it. Hahahaha. <laughs> This is just too great. Do your best Chichuyuite. Ha 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 ha. The Dodger continues to make fun of Drake while laughing very hard at him. Boo on. My situation is already bad enough without you here. Partner, give me more medicine. What? But I just gave you some. Ah ha 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 ha. I can't stop laughing at this. For me to see a heavenly dragon like this, maybe I can use breasts to defeat the evil dragons the same way I defeated Drake. Boo on. Drake starts crying more constantly. That's enough a Dodger. Drake is now in a delicate state again because of you. At this rate, I am going to run out of medicine before the counselor could make new ones. Issei then pours another round of medicine on the jewel. Ha 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 ha. I wish I could get out of here so I could tell the other dragons about this. Please don't make me use more medicine, okay? The situation is already bad enough as it is. Fine. I am done laughing anyway. Wake me up when you fight an evil dragon. I guess there is only two things that will wake this evil dragon up, someone to make fun of, and the opportunity to fight other evil dragons. Drake, are you feeling okay? Better than earlier. That crazy dragon doesn't know when to stop. I wonder what it would be like if he is known as the Opai dragon instead. The Dodger probably wouldn't care since all that motivates him is fighting and getting revenge. All I want right now is to live peacefully in this era. I guess that would be good when it comes to fighting the evil dragons. Since a Dodja is one of them, maybe he will know how to defeat him, since he doesn't seem to show fear. That or maybe he is just stupid. Just remember how stubborn evil dragons are, partner. Grendel couldn't beat me when I was at my prime, and yet he still keeps coming. You're right. I better be careful or one mistake might cost me my life. At night. Murayama is seen sleeping in her room peacefully, but suddenly started shaking. When she awakens, she sees herself at the tip of a mountain, barely able to keep herself from falling. W what is this? How did I get here? As Murayama tries to look around her, she sees a dark blue dragon heading towards her. The dragon? No, that can't be. They are not real. The dragon then spits out a fireball into Murayama's direction, causing her to lose her balance and fall. Ah. Somebody help. A giant eagle came and broke her fall. The giant bird then goes head to head with the dragon. The dragon then breathes a stream of fire towards the eagle. With Murayama hanging on the bird's back, the eagle then expands its giant wings and starts creating a strong gust. The strong winds blew the fire away towards the dragon, causing severe burns on its body. Unable to continue fighting the dragon decides to retreat. Um, thank you. 
I am Resvulgar, the bird of these mountains. Should you wish to summon me again, you must awaken. What? Before Murayama can't say any more, Resvulgar drops her, causing her to scream as she falls to her apparent death, but as soon as she hits the ground, she finds herself on the floor next to her bed. So it was only a dream. As Murayama starts feeling relieved, she starts to feel a cold object on her chest. She then realizes she was wearing a necklace, and on it is a small crystal eagle with the same shape as the one who rescued her. No, it wasn't a dream. If that's the case, what am I supposed to do? Murayama then went to bed, but was unable to sleep for the rest of the night due to fear and confusion over the events that occurred. The next day. Murayama was on the way to school where Caddis met her halfway. When both of them started commenting why they couldn't sleep well last night, they both realized they had the same dream. What? You too. Caddis said flabbergasted. I am actually scared knowing this. This is just like when we saw Haidu fighting those guys while wearing his red armor. What they exhibit was almost like magic. And when we reported to them, we were laughed at as soon as we mentioned that the people can do magic. The people who were near there acted like they didn't see anything at all. Part of the school is damaged, but was back to normal the next day. Something is going on here, but it seems that no one from the school knows anything about it, but Haidu. The thought of asking that pervert scares me, but you are right he is the only one we can turn to for now. As soon as free period starts, let's get Haidu. Murayama and Kadis finish talking as they head inside the school building. Some time later, Issei is seen talking to Mitsuda and Motohama, who later beats him up after Zenobia hints how he won Sona's heart. First the school idol and now the student council president. Why is luck only on your side? We are just as perverted as you yet none of it is coming to us. Mitsuda complains. Give us those flags now ice. Motohama yelled. I am telling you it is not like that. Issei attempts to struggle as Mitsuda puts him in a wrestling submission hold. Before Motohama and Mitsuda continue their assault, they were hit by Kadis and Murayama on the back of their head, knocking them down before dragging Issei from the floor. Murayama. Kadis. What are you doing? We need you to come with us for a bit Haidu. Murayama said. I don't like it, but there are some things we need to know from you so bared. Kadis answered. Wait. Why me? Just come. Both of them yelled simultaneously. As soon as Motohoma and Mitsuda took witness to the situation, they remain unusually calm despite seeing Issei getting grabbed by the girls of the kendo club. Ice must have done something to anger them. Mitsuda commented. That will teach Ice to get ahead of us. Motohama shows a confident smile. Murayama and Kadis reach the rooftop and finally lets go of Issei. Why did you two drag me here? Murayama answers first. We know you have something hidden from us Haidu and we want answers. What are you talking about? The fight last week. You were wearing that red armor while fighting the guys who infiltrated the school. The things we saw are very unusual as if they are magic. What is going on Haidu? Kadis answers next. Issei becomes surprised when the two girls reveal that they remember his battle with the stray magicians. Wait. How could you remember all of this? That magician erased your memories. Both girls became shocked and started to panic. So that really was a magician we saw that attacked Haidu. What is going on here? It's actually a very long story even if I wanted to tell you. Issei tries to avoid answering. We have been having abnormal events happening to us as well since then. We both even have the same dream where we were saved from a dragon by a large bird. At least tell us what you think of all of this. This is definitely not normal. I probably would have reported this to Butchu, but she is not here. Maybe I will report this to the student council as well. That won't be necessary Ice Kun. Seraphil emerges from the stairs to the roof, much to Issei's surprise. I already knew about it long before they did. You already knew Levi-sensei? Yes, in class Murayama-chan and Kadis-chan, both already exhibit signs that they remembered you from a certain event, as well as a special ability none of us knew about until now. Seraphil then turns to Murayama and Kadis. Tell me girls, did you say that you dreamed of a large bird saving you from a dragon? Yes, but what does that mean? Kadis replied. With everything that's happening recently, I guess it's okay to tell our secret. Me and Ice Kun aren't humans. We are actually devils and to explain the unnatural events occurring, you two signed a contract with Resvulgar, the cosmic eagle of Norse mythology. What? Both of them yelled simultaneously again. Meanwhile in the mountains of some country. Ah. Gasper screamed. Keep it up Shirin. Jaya Kun, stop screaming and focus more on surviving Naya. Asper and Kaneko are on the mountains getting chazzed by a herd of minotaurs after Kuroka purposely attacked one. Why do we have to come here to train? Nisama said in order to master Senjutsu, we must have a focused mind, and that can be done by getting in shape. Why is it necessary to get chazzed by minotaurs to do that? 
She also said that by doing survival training, your mind will be focused on nothing but survival. Doing this will help give you understand how to clear your mind. I think Nisama took it too far with this one. Hineko doesn't show signs of exhaustion compared to Gasper, who is practically running for his life. I am going to become roadkill at this rate. Somebody save me. And so the chase continues. After Murayama and Cadis confronted Issei to question him about the natural events that were occurring around them, Seraphil went outside after hearing their questions and revealed that both she and Issei are devils and that they unknowingly signed a contract of the cosmic eagle of Norse mythology, Resvulgr, which is said to have created the winds whenever he beats his wings. Soon after, they were taken to the old school building where they are introduced to the members of the occult research club and student council. Much to their shock, they all revealed that they were never or are no longer human. Wait, so everyone, including Kibakun, are not human, but devils, angels, and other beings? Murayama asked. Yes. The occult research club that was formed was actually a cover to prevent normal humans from finding out about us and our important meetings. In fact, Kuo Academy is practically run by us. Sona said. This is quite hard for us to take all of this in at once. It's still quite a shock to us to find out that all of you are not human. That explains why someone as awful as Haidu gets to join the occult research club. Kata said bluntly. I am still here you know. Issei complains. Ice Kuhn is not a bad person once you get to know him. Sona defended Issei, causing him to behave strangely due to being grateful. I am very thankful for your high opinion of me Sona. Issei said in his thoughts. So the rumors are true. Sona Kaichu's heart was stolen by a pervert. Kadis complains, causing Sona to blush. Don't say things you don't know. We are nothing like that in school. Kaichu is stolen Kaichu is stolen, Saji is currently sitting in the corner of the room away from others while feeling very depressed. Sorry, Haidu-kun. I had to break the news to Saji that Sona is currently staying with you. Tsubaki whispered into Issei's ear. So that's why he looks so out of it. Saji suddenly turns towards Issei and charges right at him. Before Issei can escape, Saji placed a wrestling hold around his neck. Haichu is staying with you? Why are all the girls around you Haidu? How many more of our girls are you after? I it's not like I force her or anything. This decision was made by her family, not me. Saji immediately released his hold and goes into another state of shock. So he even got her family's approval instead of mine. As I thought, only Haidu has all the luck. Saji then goes into another state of depression. I am sorry Saji, but it's not like nobody likes you. Issei again said in his thoughts as Momo and Ruruko try to comfort Saji. Murayama and Kadis are also in shock after hearing Saji's outburst. Wait. Kaichu is actually living in Haidu's house. Murayama screamed. How awful. Haidu is keeping her prisoner for his own desires. Kadis cried out. Hey. Hey. Don't say things that will cause misunderstandings. Issei protested. All of the girls here besides the student council, with the exception of Sona, live in Issei's house, and he is not who you think he is. Akeno defended Issei this time. After a brief period of silence, Murayama and Kadis decided back to the main topic. Is it true what you said earlier? The fact that you all are not human, is that really the truth? Kadis asked. Yes. This school is the main base for the three factions, which is why they are allowed to attend this school. They used to be at war with each other, but with greater threats that is happening at the moment, a peace treaty was signed in order to combat the threat. We can't let normal students know about it due to the dangers it might bring them, so we disguised ourselves as humans to prevent suspicions. Sona answered. Wait, so the people that attacked Haidu earlier were not human? They are, but not normal ones since you witnessed them using magic. They are real magicians. Many would not expose themselves in the human world, but the ones who attacked are very hostile towards people like us and have committed terrorist acts to get their demands met, no matter the cost. This time, Issei answered. Seraphil then adds herself in. I think it is time to explain to the girls why they are here so I will explain. I told both of you earlier that you two signed a contract with Resvulgr, correct? Resvulgr is a giant eagle that sits at the northern edge of the heavens, and according to legend, the bird is also set to create Earth's wind whenever he beats his wing. Resvulgr is often feared as its power is on par with the evil dragons, powerful dragons of abnormal power, that it takes the most powerful people of the three factions to beat them. They were extinct, but with terrorists reviving them for their own ambition, we are recruiting everyone we can to stop them. Hold on, why are we the ones who got a contract with Resvulgr? We don't remember signing contracts like that. And why now? How come we didn't know about it before? Both Murayama and Kadis become worried. Seraphil grabs a piece of paper out of the desk. On the paper, there is a round symbol with an eagle at the center. Did you two pick up this recently? Both girls immediately recognize the symbol. That's right. 
We saw a cosplayer passing around paper we thought were advertisements for a special event. When me and Caddis got one, we realized that these weren't pamphlets, but some sort of symbol. We were holding one half of the symbol, so we thought that by connecting the two halves, we can see what else is going on in the city. When we did, a bright light flashes on the eagle symbol, and then it disappears. The two halves were suddenly connected. We thought it was some kind of trick so we ignored it and move on. For the two of you to be holding both halves, no doubt that Resvulgar has chosen you too. Connecting the symbols together means that you two have signed the contract and therefore is now the master of this giant bird. So because of this, we are going to have to fight terrorists. No way. We may be good at kendo, but as humans, we can't deal with supernatural beings all of a sudden. Caddis complains. We know that. Only our strongest will be the ones dealing with the terrorists such as Ice Kuhn. Issei becomes alarmed at Seraphal's statement. Wait, are you telling me that I am the one who has to deal with our strongest opponents? I never said you are doing it alone. You have all of us to help you, including me. As long as we are together, no one can't stop us. Seraphal said enthusiastically. Zone aside. Seriously one Isama, you shouldn't take the situation so lightly. Considering that you now hold a contract with Resvulver, I don't think it is safe for you to even live in your own house due to increasing terrorist attacks by the Cow's Brigade. Kiba told the two girls. Cow's Brigade. Both girls said at the same time. That's the group responsible for the attacks that have been happening recently. Then the only place I know that is safe enough for them is Ice's house, considering that it was built to withstand warfare. Zenobia suggested. Mureyama and Caddis becomes dismayed over Zenobia's idea. No way. No way. We are not staying at the pervert's house. Both of them yelled simultaneously. They will violate us once we even take one step in there. Agreed. If we are even across from him, there is no telling what he can do to me and Mureyama. Zenovia does have a point. If you stay in your own homes, both of you will be at risk of terrorist attacks along with your family, since we can't be there to protect you. Are you sure you want to risk that? Irina asked. Mureyama and Caddis, unable to respond, became silent. What should we do? What should we do? The two girls said in their thoughts. For their own safety, Mureyama and Caddis reluctantly agrees to stay in the Haidu residence after the student council obtained permission from their parents. As Issei walks by them, Mureyama grabs him by the collar. Listen Haidu, I don't care what the reason is, but if you dare touch me and Caddis, you are dead, understand. I got it. I promise I won't do such things while you two are living in my house. Mureyama then releases Issei. Don't worry Ice Kun. They will eventually warm up to you. Seraphil tries to cheer up Issei, although he wasn't really depressed. As soon as Issei's house is in sight, Mureyama and Caddis expressed shock and amazement. You live in a mansion Haidu? What exactly do your parents do? This was built by Butchu's family to accommodate the number of people living in the house. I see. Both of them are not impressed after hearing what Issei said. Once the door opens, Seraphil immediately greets the new house guests to Issei's parents. While admitting that it was unexpected, they are not surprised. As long as they can take care of themselves, I don't mind considering that we are not the ones who built this house and that more people keep on coming and coming. Issei's mother sighs. As I thought, my son has truly surpassed his father in accomplishing his dreams. Issei's father starts crying tears of joy. It's not like that. Both girls immediately went into denial. Issei sighs at the situation and heads back to his room, leaving the other girls to accommodate them to their rooms. Hang on Ice Kun. Seraphal heads to Issei's direction. What is it Sarah? Issei becomes speechless when a soft feeling touched his lips, much to the shock of others. I didn't want you to forget a goodnight kiss. After all, I am your girlfriend. Sorry Sarah. I am still getting the hang of being in a relationship. Mureyama and Caddis, however, reacts the most strongly. What a minute Levi sensei, did you just say that Haidu is your boyfriend? Mureyama starts to tremble. Yes. Me and Ice Kun have been dating a couple of months now. He is the reason why I became an assistant teacher for his class. Eeeh? Both Mureyama and Caddis yelled. After this, I am next, right? Rr. I hope that I get my turn. Time for me to test my limits as an angel. Eh? Everybody is going with the flow. Then give me a kiss too, I san. The Keno and the church trio begin showing signs of jealousy after seeing Seraphil kissing Issei. Sylphie tugs Issei's sleeve. You are going to give me a kiss too, right? Roswis, who was already home, gave a small laugh at the situation. It appears that everyone is not giving up on Ice Kun, despite already having a girlfriend. What about you Sona-chan? Are you going to give Ice Kun a goodnight kiss? Sona's face immediately turns red. Not in front of everyone one Isama. Mureyama and Caddis grows even more shocked at Issei's high popularity with girls. 
As everyone in this house likes Haidu. I am already surprised that this pervert is able to get these girls to live with him. Seraphal then turns to the Kendo girls. All right, both of your rooms will be on the fourth floor in the left. Get some rest, because tomorrow, we will train you two on how to use magic. But we are not magicians. No ordinary humans can actually do magic. Both of you are no longer ordinary after signing that contract, Caddis Chan. Magic is needed in order to summon Resvalgrigan, which both of you gained when you connect the two halves of the contract. Anyway, good night. Seraphal walks away. All right girls, follow me. A kendo guides the kendo girls to their rooms, while the girls Ida say for a goodnight kiss, much to his dismay. The next morning. As Mureyama begins to wake up, she becomes confused and starts looking around. It took her some time for her to remember where she was. Oh yeah, I am living in the pervert's house. Fully awake, Mureyama decides to head out of her room, where she sees Caddis walking past her. Morning Mureyama. Are you heading downstairs for breakfast? Morning Caddis. I am, but I am still not used to this house yet. I know. I feel intimidated going through the large hallways to find the bathroom. I even got lost when I was on my way back. I still remember where the elevator is. Come on let's go. Before the girls can reach the elevator, Ravel runs to them. Excuse me. Can you two check if Isama is awake on the second floor? We need him for today's training. Thank you. Ravel ran off without letting them give an answer. If we are going to do this, we need to bring our Shinai. Yeah. Who knows if Haidu is actually planning something for us. Mureyama and Caddis grab their Shinai as they head to the second floor. Once they figure out which room is Issei's, they made a big mistake by opening the door without knocking. Hey Haidu, Ravel-chan told us to wake you up so Becker Mureyama can even finish, she became speechless at the sight of Issei laying in bed with Seraphal and Asia on both sides. Issei, who was already awake, begins panicking after seeing Mureyama and Caddis at his door and struggles to get out. Wait. This isn't what it looks like. I do, you pervert. Both yelled as they prepare to beat him with their shinai. Bye I I I I I. Issei yelled as he is getting hit. At the kitchen table after Serapho left to the underworld for work. So that is how you get all those bruises on your face. Do you want me to comfort you to make it feel better? Akeno attempts to seduce Issei, whose face is filled with bumps and bruises being healed by Asia. Mureyama and Caddis emits a killing intent, causing Issei to become afraid to answer. Not at this moment. I don't want to get beat up again. Sona then comes to the kitchen table. I am sorry you had to see one Isama like this with Ice Kun. She feels that as his girlfriend, it is her right to sleep with her loved one. Mureyama and Caddis's opinion of Issei worsens after hearing Sona. I still can't believe this. If we weren't targeted by terrorists, we would never stay here with this womanizer. Forget it Mureyama. As long as we are going to stay in Haidu's house, we might as well tolerate his antics, but only as long as he doesn't do strange things to us. But you hit me when I didn't do anything to you. We thought you were violating Levi Sensei and Asia. Like I can do that when both of my arms are held. Alright. We've got training to do after this. You two better be ready, because we are not going to go easy on you. Zenovia warned. Yes. After finishing the rest of the morning preparations, the kendo girls were dragged to one of the training rooms in the first basement, with Lafay Pendergan supervising them. Alright, now try concentrating your magic into your hands. Lefei apparently already taught them the basics of magic, but being able to use magic is a different story for them as they hold up their hands, trying to concentrate. Nothing is coming out. I am pretty sure that this is the way you taught us. You are not supposed to force it out. Relax and concentrate, otherwise your magic could become out of control. Sylphie and Roswis are seen training together in combat, while Zenovia is sword fighting with Kiba. Sona, who is also interested in getting magicians for her servants, is working with Ravel. Akeno is also training with magic alongside Arena and Asia. Issei, on the other hand, is currently attempting to further develop the forms of illegal move trident in order to fully stabilize True Queen through various training methods involving speed, weightlifting, and magic, considering that the forms are based on them. This house sure has a lot of convenience. Griselda's voice is heard as she, Dulio, and Slash Dog, who brought a large black dog with him, make an unexpected visit to the training room after Issei's parents welcome them. Hello there, I am Dulio Jesueldo. We are here on behalf of Michael Sama and former Governor Azazel. Let's get along from now on. I am Tobio Iqus. This here is my longinus who I named Jin. Dulio Sama. What did Michael Sama sent you for? Irina said out of disbelief. We are here to supervise the training of the Gremory to further prepare you to fight the Cow's Brigade, especially Sekiryute Dono. Mureyama and Caddis became confused of their unexpected visitors, which Lefei took notice of. Dulio-sama is an angel of heaven who is known as the strongest exorcist ever. 
Griselda Sama is also a top exorcist who was reincarnated to an angel by the seraph, Gabriel Sama. Slash Dog is also the current possessor of the Longinus, Canis Lycaean, which is the big black dog you see there. Longinus. Top tier sacred gears with enough power to kill gods. I Sama, Dulio Sama, and Slash Dog are currently Longinus possessors. Our leader, Vali Sama, is also a Longinus possessor, although he is not within this group. The Kendo Girls goes into a state of disbelief. Are you telling us that Haidu has a weapon that can kill a god? Not at this moment, Mireyama san, I Sama has gotten powerful, but he has yet to fully master it. That is why Dulio Sama and Slash Dog are here. So, what do you say? Will you let us be your sparring partners? Dulio asked. Many immediately agreed, especially Issei, Zenovia, and Arena. If you don't mind, I would like to have our Vritra user to participate. I am hoping that he would be able to reach Balance Breaker with these members. That should be okay. The more people we have, the stronger our force. With the Cow's Brigade making even more mysterious actions than before, we are hoping to get all the support we can, since those who can stand up to them are all in high positions, which is hard for them due to political issues. We need all of you to lend your strength to stop them, and we will do our best to offer support as well for the sake of the three factions and the human world. Sister Griselda bows her head down as everyone agreed. After hearing her reason, Mireyama and Cadiz rid themselves of doubt and decided to take part in the training as well. We don't know much about what is going on here, but it seems that the situation is quite serious. Our family was threatened. If we want them to live, what choice do we have but to get stronger? If the cow's brigade are as tough as you said they are, then let me become stronger as well, so I can fight them. We will also have to come up with a plan as well to defend against them, especially since we don't know what their motives are. Sona suggested. That's right. Even the most powerful should never underestimate the enemy. Dulio said. Just as they begin, Kuroka came back with the exhausted Kaneko and Gasper. That was very mean of you Nisama. I, I don't think I can move anymore. Kaneko and Gasper complained while catching their breath. Nyahahaha. You two are the ones that wanted me to train you, and that was the quickest way Naya. I am glad that my sparring partner is Julio and not Kuroka. Issei joked. Howard Naya. They are the ones who asked me to train them. Was it really necessary for us to clear our minds by getting chazzed by minotaurs? Gasper asked, while shaking. Again, I am glad I am training with Dulio. Go get some rest. Our training has just started. Yes, I senpai. I will. Both Kaneko and Gasper head to the bath to wash up as Kuroka watches over their training. In Romania. What exactly do you mean that Valerie escaped? Riaz is questioning Marius, the new mayor of the Teeps faction. Even I don't know myself, but for sure her escape won't last as long as she still has the Holy Grail. If you get in the way, I will send Krom Kruich to deal with you. Hearing this, Riaz backs down, but swears to stop him after leaving with Kibben and Azazel. Valerie, however, is no longer in Romania. Wounded but still alive, she collapsed in front of the Hyadu residence as she loses consciousness due to blood loss. End of the here. So that's it for today's video guys, before you go just like the video and share it with your friends. Bye.